Okay, so today we're going to be talking about number systems and integers. For the real number systems, we're going to be classifying numbers that you've been dealing with your whole life, the same numbers you've been using. Uh, you probably just didn't know that they had names and categories. So the first category we're going to talk about is called the natural numbers. So the natural numbers are what we call the counting numbers. These are the ones that you learned when you were probably like in preschool. One, two, three, four, and I'm just going to put dot dot dot. That keeps going for a really long time. I'm not going to keep going. Uh, but any number that you can probably count with your fingers given enough time would be a natural number. And the way I remember that is natural, you know, your fingers are natural, right? Those are naturally occurring on your hands. Uh, so that's how I remember that one. Now, the ones you count on your fingers. Now, the next group is called whole numbers. The whole numbers have all of the natural numbers um, and then also zero. So that'll be like zero and then all of the other natural numbers that we've already added in uh, from the, the group before. Next group is called the integers. The integers are all the natural numbers plus zero and then also all of the negative natural numbers. So that would be like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, then 0, then all the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to put dot 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 in the front and dot 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 in the back because it keeps going even more negative and even more positive. Now the integers have to be uh, positive or negative whole numbers. We're not talking about parts of numbers just yet for integers. The next group is called rational numbers. A rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. So some examples uh, would be integers are, are rational numbers. For example, negative 2, because negative 2 can be written as negative 2 over 1. Right? So that's a fraction. Uh, then it says any fractions, so like 3 fifths, or negative seven halves, okay? And then it also includes any decimals that stop. So let's talk about decimals that stop. For example, like 1.25. Well, 1.25 could be written as a fraction. That's five fourths. Now I'm not expecting you to write them as fractions. I just need you to know that any decimal that stops can be written as a fraction. And then the other one is any decimals that repeat. So another example of that would be like 0.3 repeating. 0.3 repeating that the bar on top says it's going to keep going, meaning 0.3333333 forever. I can't write forever, so I put that line on top. That's what that means. Can also be rewritten as a fraction. Again, I'm not asking you to learn how to rewrite them as a fraction. All I'm asking you to do is recognize any decimals that stop or repeat could technically be written as a fraction, and so therefore they are in the group of rationals. The group of irrationals are all of the non-repeating or non-terminating decimals. Anything that's not rational would then by default be irrational. So some examples would be like pi. Pi is 3.14159272 uh, and it keeps going on forever and it doesn't stop or repeat. So a dead giveaway is that we had to use a symbol. We couldn't just um, write the number because it doesn't stop or repeat. So how are you going to write it? Well, we have to use symbols for that. Another symbol we use is the radical sign. For example, root 2. Root 2 is, I don't even know, 1.41 or something like that. And it keeps going on forever. Um, so much so that we can't write it down as a uh, non-repeating non or non-terminating decimal. So we have to use a symbol like the radical symbol. E. That's another famous one you'll learn in college algebra if you ever take that class. Um, other roots like root 3, these are some examples. Now, notice root 4 can be reduced to 2, so that is not an irrational number. Root 2 would be a, a natural number and a whole number and an integer and a rational. Um, so not all radicals, because some radicals can be reduced to whole numbers. So just be a little bit careful of that. And then the last number system that we'll be talking about is the real numbers. Anything that's real, uh, all real numbers consist of all rationals and irrationals. So basically every number you've probably dealt with in your whole life is real, a real number. 
Um, and anything we're going to be talking about today is real. There's one other category of numbers that we're not going to be talking about today. You'll um, you'll learn about it if you take some uh, other upper level math classes. So um, I don't really have any examples for there because this is basically all the numbers you've, you've dealt with in your whole life. Now there is another interesting thing to note. Each one of these number systems has um, a symbol attached to it um, that kind of looks like a letter. So the natural numbers we use the letter N but it has this extra little, it's like a fancy end, so it has like two lines on the uh, left stem. Whole numbers, we use the letter W again, but it's a fancy W, so we have like an extra line on the W there. Uh, integers, we use the letter Z. Now I know you're thinking, uh, why in the world is Z, and I don't have any answer for you. It's a Z with an extra line uh, in the middle section, so it's like a fancy Z. Um, I just know it can't be I because I is for irrationals. So down here in irrationals we use the letter I again but we use a little fancy I. With two lines on it and then rationals you might think R right but we can't use R because R we have rational and real and those both start with the same letter. So we actually use Q for rationals with an extra little line there it's a fancy looking Q. Q the way I remember that is quotient quotient is a fancy name for a fraction okay so that helps you remember Q and then real numbers that's the R and this R right here we use for lots of different things so that symbol is probably the when you really want to know out of all of them to make sure that you take it on with to other units next what we're gonna do is look at these numbers in a Venn diagram so if I'm saying this whole box going from all the way around here including this other rectangle on the side this whole big fat box this is all of the real numbers um, that we could ever think of okay then within that big box we have two boxes uh, we have a small one over here that doesn't have anything else in it and that's the irrationals and I think the letter we use for irrationals is I and the rationals is let's see the rationals are letter Q uh, that's going to be this rectangle on the left okay now there's three circles or ovals in here um, and we have uh, integers next which is Z and then whole numbers which is the W the fancy W and then the last one we have inside is the naturals naturals is the N so some examples of a natural number would be one two three dot 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 now see that the natural numbers in this circle here also happen to be in the whole number circle and that actually happens to also be in the integer circle so one is a natural number a whole number an integer a rational and a real it belongs in all of the categories in the whole numbers the, the purple one the only number that belongs in only the whole number category is zero because if I take zero plus all the natural numbers that gets me the group of whole numbers so a, whole, a zero is a whole number, an integer, a rational, and a real number. It's not irrational, um, but it is belong to a lot of the other categories. The integers, the only numbers that belong in the integers that aren't already zero, one, two, three, which are whole and natural, would be negative three, negative two, negative one, and a whole bunch of other ones in there, okay? So negative 1, for example, is an integer. It's also a rational because the integer circle belongs in the rational square or rectangle and then the rational rectangle also belongs in the real. So all of those belong together. The rationals, the th examples of things that are only rational and not anything else would be like decimals that repeat 
uh, decimals that stop, fractions like three fourths or negative eleven fifths. Just some examples. So fractions and decimals that stop and repeat that aren't necessarily integers, wholes, or naturals. Okay. Every rational number is also real. And then the last group we have is irrational. Some examples there are like pi, oops, root 2, e, root 3. All of these things are rational and also real. So every number that we're going to be talking about today is all real. Okay. So let's see if we can't organize uh, some numbers into their categories. So number five, the number five, is a natural number, which means it's also a whole number, an integer, a rational, and a real. We can see that since five does belong in natural from the picture above, it belongs in whole, integer, and rational and real. Negative 9. Negative 9 is not a natural number because it's not positive. Negative 9 is not a whole number because it's not 0 or positive. But it is an integer because it's a positive and negative whole number. All integers are also rational because they can be written as fractions. And every rational or irrational number is all real. In fact, we can probably cheat a little bit and put check marks on all of the real numbers because every number that we're going to be dealing with is going to be real today. The next number is zero. Zero is not natural because it's not one of those counting numbers, but it is whole because whole includes zero, which means it's also an integer. It's positive, negative, whole number. It's rational because we can write it as a fraction and we know it's real already. Negative three-fifths. That is not an integer, not a whole, or not a natural because they're not a counting numbers. Uh, Rational, it is rational because it is can be written as a fraction. So it's rational and then real. 4 pi. Pi is the dead giveaway because the, the pi has a symbol. It is irrational. It never stops, it never repeats, and so it's irrational and real. And then the last one, we have a decimal that stops. So therefore it is rational because it can be written as a fraction and real. And that concludes this part on number systems.